Welcome to a short tutorial on business requirement specification document from Adaptive Processes. I am Ellen. I work as Principal Consultant and Requirements Engineering Evangelist with Adaptive Processes. A quick note on our organization. Adaptive is uh, one of the world's very first integrated requirements engineering solutions organization. We provide products consulting and training in requirements engineering space I got close to 200 plus customers across the globe and we are 10 year old uh, we have conducted more than 200 re workshops in different parts of the world and we are a partner to iiba international institute of business analysis canada ireb international requirements engineering board germany Scrum Study USA and Open RE Foundation USA. So now let me take you to uh, the business requirement specification document and I'm illustrating that with our own product business requirement specification document. Uh, There's a very nice story that I would like to begin with. Uh, once I was conducting a workshop and uh, there was a lady from Hewlett Packard and she had one peculiar problem. She said, her requirements documents are never being reviewed and accepted by customer. I was a bit surprised that uh, uh, why is it the case? So when I asked her, uh, how big is your requirements document? I got a surprising answer. She said it's about 400 pages. So that reminded me of my Infosys days when I used to work as a requirements engineer for large ERP implementations. We actually used to have requirements documents which were 200 to 300 pages long and sometimes they were so heavy that we couldn't even open them in Microsoft Word. So when you double click on Microsoft Word, it will say failed. So then I recognize the fact that I think people do not follow the right practices while developing requirement specification documents. So typically they put everything into one requirement specification document starting from their high level requirements or business requirements to detailed requirements. When you do that, you obviously end up with a large document, which is 300 to 400 pages, and it makes it highly um, impractical to manage such a large document. So from that perspective, we decided to have a two structure requirements document. So the business requirement specifications only provide high level requirements about the solution that we are going to discuss. The detailed requirement specification documents or system requirement specification documents would be describing one of the features or one of the requirements mentioned in the business requirement specification document. So that is how we would like to go. And of course, I would also make another video for our detailed requirement specification documents to indicate or showcase you what all we cover in that particular document. Uh, of course, we have two choices. We can make uh, requirements documents in Microsoft Word or Excel. Uh, I would always prefer Excel because Excel has many more advantages compared to Word. One, it is a little bit more compact. Two, it also allows you a tab structure, which is very beneficial for navigating between different sections of uh, the document. Mm. But one thing which we must remember uh, when we produce something in Excel is that it is not highly printer friendly. So you have to check for the printing aspects of the document and the spelling aspects because Excel does not do automatic spell check. But bearing those two aspects, I think Excel is 20 times better than Word. That is how I would uh, put and I would advise you to also explore this particular way of writing requirements. So now let me get into the requirements document and explain you how we have developed this requirements document for our core product, which is GRC Perfect. Uh, GRC Perfect is a product uh, aimed at helping organizations to manage their governance, risk and compliance management activities. Uh, so if you see the first page that you see is of course a cover page, which gives you a little bit idea about uh, for who, which project this document has been created and little bit of a document history or revision history. Then we have a page called index uh, or you can call it as table of contents. Uh, both are fine. Uh, the beauty of this is you can actually go to any section and come back very quickly. Say for example, if I have a technical architect, I may be more interested in my NFRs. 
So I can simply go to my NFR section, look at the non-functional requirements. And again, I can simply come back to my home page. So this way, your navigation becomes simple uh, and quite effective. Then the first section that we typically include is uh, your BRD, um, uh, the sorry, the terms and glossary section where you explain the terms that you use. Uh, if there are any synonyms being used or homonyms being used for a particular thing. So for example, a, a typical homonym that I find people getting confused is between matrix. A matrix is basically a table, whereas a common homonym would be matrix, which is indicates measurements. So because sometimes people use these terms uh, interchangeably and uh, that can create trouble um, in front of your uh, customer. So just to make sure that and of course um, homonyms uh, or synonyms are very common like in our uh, GRC industry uh, for something called defect what we call defect uh, people also call it as error they call it as bug they call it as issues um, in various names so we know that okay when somebody is talking of um, a bug or error or issues it could actually be meaning defect okay so this is how you create your um, terms and glossary page and this is highly essential because I have seen many companies really struggling with this aspect they do not make a good glossary document and and the developers and everybody is confused about the same aspect being called in different names uh, for example with one of my clients uh, there is a term called um, pigment uh, and it is also called toner it is also called colorant um, everything but actually what it means is just the same physical thing then we come to the overview tab where it gives little bit details about the customer what the customer is looking for what is the project objective what is the system objective that we were trying to do so as i told you this is a governance risk and compliance management system and uh, what is the as a scenario in most companies that i work with or we work with it's mostly managed through disparate non-integrated systems or excel workbooks and what this system is trying to do is to provide an integrated platform for governance risk and compliance then we come to our context diagram because this is how usually our system is deployed so mostly company would have an erp or a legacy system from where we have to pull the project and people data uh, they also would have uh, many often attendance tracking system which is your physical swipe in system with which we need to interact we also need to interact with our email servers, the user categories that you usually we see are employees, project managers, delivery managers, business unit heads, CDOs and CEOs of the company. Uh, and then of course, uh, uh, since it's a GRC product, we of course uh, refer to the domain side of the story, which is uh, looking at CMMI, ISO 27001, ISO 9001, ITIL, ISO 20000. ISO 22301 as the primary input for GRC related development. Then we have put a non-functional requirements uh, tab uh, where we have discussed all the non-functional requirements that we wish to cater to. So for example, what is our performance requirement? What is our scalability requirement? What is our price requirement? What is our portability requirement? So in the way we have listed about 40 plus um, NFRs and we have said which ones are very critical for us and which ones are not very critical for us. For example, safety does not matter to us so much because it's a software application. It cannot really create something which a device can create or a hardware product can create. Then we come to requirements, implicit requirements. So these are some things which we have gathered along with our customers uh, because we work with many customers in the GRC consulting space itself so we got some requirements saying that okay most customers tend to um, uh, require this so for example now we see a lot of customers asking for an integration with jira uh, because maybe they are tracking bugs using jira and they would like to extend uh, the system with our uh, solution um, also it could be uh, integration with tfs this is another one uh, which we have come across so if we are building any new module, we could try to see if this module needs to be integrated with Jira or TFS. 
then we come to requirements catalog so this is where we have started putting our detailed requirements saying what are the main requirements that we're looking for of course login is a must then we look at schedule we look at defect we look at risk we look at change request creating employees managing training time tracking these are some of the key features that we wish to implement in our grc system so another one also would be audit management from a compliance audit and compliance i can put it that way so these are some of the high level features that we are looking for then we also have exclusively maintained out of scope because many often people may not be very clear about what is not planned to be in scope because uh, sometimes people say what is not written as scope is out of scope but we tend to write we prefer to write it in a very distinct way saying financial accounting is not in scope recruitment management is not in scope task dependency management is not in scope critical path is not in scope due to some reason one it may not be aligned to the product vision and sometimes it could be extremely complex feature so because it's an extremely complex feature so cost of development could go very high and we have a price point uh, which we want to serve so we said okay let's keep few things out of scope till again the product vision is enhanced and then some of this may actually come into scope but at this point in time they are out of scope then we also looked at the environment that uh, we would like to work with um, since we are a microsoft uh, bispark partner we decided to go with microsoft technology uh, another reason is uh, we need to integrate with ms office uh, team foundation server and such kind of products uh, that's why it's better that we are on a technology which is easily integratable with microsoft technology then we have put typical mic data migration that we would lead with our customers so mostly we need project data users data organization structure and many often we also integrate with their document library because organizations may be using SharePoint as a document library. So we use that part. Then we come to the navigation part, which is mainly indicating from one module, which all modules can you move and access. So that is what has been provided in navigation. This also you can put it in a pictorial form just that um, since uh, it's easy for us to uh, develop test cases from uh, Excel. So I have maintained it in Excel then the interfaces that we usually work with so many often uh, oracle apps or any other erp I, I would not say just oracle apps any erp system is typically our um, uh, system for collecting certain enterprise data because many often uh, the erp may already have projects and employee data which we would extend then the different reports that we want to build so mostly you will see status reports defect trends and issue trend and billing and burn down chart so these are the different kind of reports and who can access them has been provided here coming to security module uh, this also tells uh, which module who can do what so for example if we are talking of a schedule feature so we're saying team leader and project manager can create update and delete whereas all other roles can view the data then we come to problem tracker so these are different uh, discussions uh, under progress so sometimes like task dependency whether it should be there integration with requirements modeling tools say export to ppt integration with bi tools so these are things that we would like to do but we haven't made up our mind and there's still some discussion going on then we have a brd checklist which tells whether all aspects that should be covered in brd is covered or not so sometimes um, we also say that some of the aspects may be described in SRS because we don't want to um, make BRD very heavy um, we don't want a 200 page document for BRD or SRS for any purpose so our documents should be really concise and small and then we have a peer review template which says who all looked at the document and what are the feedbacks that came during the review of the document so this completes my uh, discussion on our BRD template uh, and uh, do look at our uh, video on SRS template as well because that is also very comprehensive and has lots of inputs. Uh, in case you would like to have this template, you can buy it for a very nominal cost uh, on our website and please take a note um, 
of our website, which is uh, www.adaptiveprocesses.com. Uh, or if you visit adaptive.acia, that will also lead you to our website. Thank you so much for going through this video and I hope you uh, like this video and we would uh, be glad if you uh, give us a feedback or share this video with your friends and colleagues. Thank you so much.